And may all the saints say, Amen. Amen. While standing, shall we turn our Bible to the book of Luke? Luke, Luke Gospel, chapter 1. Luke, chapter 1, verse 1. Luke, chapter 1. I believe we are there. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in other most excellent Theophilus, that you, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain man named Zachariah of the course of Abia, Abijah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the law blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they, do, and they both were now were stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in order of his cause, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zachariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zachariah, for thy prayer is said, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned unto the Lord their God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. He said, when the congregation were in praying, Zacharias' Lord was to burn incense. So before the word of the Lord is being ministered, the people wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. But their prayers to ascend unto the throne of God. So the 30 minutes waiting is very, very necessary. Very, very necessary in the sight of God. So as a church, if we want to prosper, and as individuals, if you want to get anywhere with God, then we need to take the instructions of the prophets very seriously. We can never prosper without taking keen interest in the instructions of the prophets. He said, how can we receive the supernatural when we have neglected the very foundations of the prophet message? We can never receive it. So let's move in. We're talking about music. How important it is. Before God, and our God has instructed his church, instructed his people, but in come fa- to his presence. Esafu, ne find me. Ako, abe be here. Kenya be ba. Bona be ba. What the Bible teaches us about music. 
Once again, let's move in. He said, a human has to worship. Every human has to worship. You have to worship something. It's just in you to worship. So whosoever does not worship God, worship an idol. There is nobody on earth that is not worshiping anything. Everybody, God created us and created a vacuum in us that we should long for something. So everybody is interested in something. This, this early this morning, you can see some people at the golf park. That is, that is what they also love. That is what they worship. Everything that they have to do to be able to be there, they want to be there. Why? Because it is in him. It is something craving. God created that in every human being. So, the Bible tells us that the Lord found pleasure in the praises of his people. He found pleasure in the praises of you. The praises of me. The praises of the church. There are over 500 specific references in the Bible to music and musical instruments. It's evident that this is not a subject that God treats lightly. As a matter of fact, the lengthiest book in the Bible is a song book. The book of Psalms is a song book. And it is here that God demonstrates his concern for the kind of music that his children enjoy and perform by providing this example for us to follow. The book of Psalms. The collection of 150 poems that make up the book of Psalms. Mirrors the idea of a religious pity and communion with God. They were written by David. David Ma. Moses Psalm 90. Moses Umeko. Absa. Solomon. Solomon. Absa. That is. David's choir master. The sons of Korah. Korah be a family of mu official musicians. And and for the express purpose of being set to music for worship. They even include musical notations ni. to indicate when key changes ni, are to be made. This is very important to God. Ni, ni, you don't God. want things to be done anyhow. It's what I, it's what I no. feel ni, ke, ke. Well, everything to be done decently and in order. Si, boy, I no fear, no, but no so our music also should be done in decently and in order. But I feel no, go, la, la, wa, atwale, be, ja, no, to, na. He said, for example, the instruction seller, meaning to modulate to the next key, change to the next key. The key. The key. The key. The key. Either you are changing to a major key to, or a, to a minor key. How yeah, okay, ah, okay, oh, is oh, true? Oh, 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 and it's not normally articulated when scripture is being read aloud. We don't mention it. But Sela is changing notes. 
From the Hebrew language, Psalm translates as a book of praise. Yeah, Hebrew I will be a cake, la la, a low summer, betomake, wolo, wolo, ni ake joy, a low la la wolo. This was the prayer book that our Lord Jesus used in the synagogue services. Solomon will only want to choose Christ to get to the as a full That is his book. Our Lord, when he came on the he used it in the synagogue services. It was his hymn book. At the temple's festival, he used it in his teaching. Made temptations with it. He messed up and quoted the book of Psalms. And some from it, the Haral. That is Psalm 115 to 18. From it, at the Lord's Supper. He quoted from it when he was hung on the cross. And he died with it on his lips. So how powerful is that book? But we don't, we, don't, we don't see how powerful that book is. Of all the scriptures in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the people that are in the other side, that practice occultism, many, that practice criticism, many they don't use in the book. Only the book of Psalms. Only the book of Psalms they use. When they want to command Saint Anthony or Mami Wata to come, there is a diagram they draw on the floor. And when they draw it on the floor, a glass of water is being put down. Place it in the middle. While a Psalm. A portion of a psalm is being quoted. And when the psalm is being quoted, other person is also chanting. Then another person is now invoking that spirit into the glass. And if it is St. Anthony or St. Mark, he will appear in the glass. And he will speak. Why? Because he knew how powerful that book of Satan knew how powerful that book So, Reverend said, anything that God uses, Satan impersonated. But we don't know how powerful that book is. So, we don't know how powerful that book is. Our Lord used it. He messed Satan with that book. He met Satan with that book. He sat from that book. He overcame Satan by that book. Dying on the cross, he quoted that book. How powerful the book of Psalms is. We don't cherish it. We don't know. We don't know how it is. We don't know how it is. He said the book of Psalms remains the national hymn book of Israel today. He said, far from advocating a single star, some read from a classical presentation written for the temple musicians to the simple but expressive ballads which David composed while tending a ship. The balance, the balance he was talking about is that they are simple songs that David composed. It's like a narrative composition of simple, simple rhythms. Why tending the ship? In the book of Psalms, you yeah. will find rally songs. Marching songs. Victory songs. 
that are sons of repentance lamentation petition praise renewal and thanksgiving there are sons for saints and sons for sinners. The book of Psalms. Contains all this. He said the book of Psalms has been called the door into the temple of praise and prayer. And in all ages, and in more than a thousand languages, the church has found through the pastor of means to access to God. The Bible also shows us that man has long been aware of the effect of music upon our daily existence. And it's power to influence people both physically and emotionally. Do we know that? That music has power to influence emotionally physically. Chapter 2. Let's go here. We'll see. He said, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, yes, Samuel, 14 to 23, he said, the scripture relates an example of how a man was made well, body, soul, and spirit through the music of a young shepherd boy. music, it was not prayer. But only music. It came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed physically. He was refreshed physically. He was well mental. And the evil spirit departed from him spiritually. So don't play the music alone. He was physically healed. He was mentally healed. He was spiritually restored. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15. He said, Then King Saul said to Saul, Let there be found out among your servants a man of God. He said, We learned the subject. The prophet Elisha once used music to create an atmosphere so he could inquire of the Lord. For the king of Israel. Elisha, he said, Let there be found out among your servants a man of God. For the king of Israel, Judah and Edom. For the king of Israel, Judah and Edom. Judah, okay, but now bring me the missile. And it came to pass when the mystery prayed that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And the Without the music, Elisha could not bring the message. It was, it was in another atmosphere. He was so annoyed. In that, an, in that annoyance, the presence of God cannot come there. Because God works in an atmosphere. So, if we don't know the atmosphere in which God works in, we can pray from morning to evening, we will not have any results. Though Elisha has received double portion of Elijah's anointing, Elisha but he has been able to perform so many miracles. But he realized that the condition in which he was at that moment 
He can never bring the presence <inaudible> of God. So he needs something to create an atmosphere for him to get out of where he is. So he called for the musicians to come and play. And when they started praying, playing, then he was able to gather himself to get out of the condition in which he was to enter into the atmosphere. And he was able to Hear from God. Contact God. So God in his, is in an atmosphere. That's why the, the scripture says the things of God are spiritually descended. To be able to understand man, you need the spirit of man. In order to be able to talk to man, you need to have the spirit of man to talk to man. And in order for us to be able to hear from God and talk to God, we need the spirit of God. Elisha knew these two things. So he entered to the spirit before the spirit came upon him. And he prophesied. Amen. Amen. That is what we need. And when we get it, we we'll say. He said, as the trap of Israel were so set to war against their enemies. That's Second Chronicles chapter 20. 21 to 22. They said that they put a choir and the musician instrument in front of the enemy. Jehoshaphat appointed singers son to the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. And when they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambush against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mansiah, which were come against Judah, and were and they were smitten. In the New Testament, yeah, of Acts. Chapter 16. We found the account of two early Christian leaders, Paul and Silas, who were cast into prison for preaching the gospel. Many they used the opportunity to minister through song and glorified God. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. The prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's band were loose. That is the power of praises. The power of praises broke the doors. Broke the chains. So let us know what prayer praises does. So let's look at music. And religion through the ages. Okay. Or through the ages, how God Lala. said. Ke jamo. Ke you know he said, now, let's review what we have just learned from these biblical passages. In both the Old and the New Testament, music was, a ve was vital to the life of the believer. Both as an example of joy 
and an act of obedience unto God. God has given us instruction by way of examples. As to the kind of music that he wants his people to have. Far from being merely a, a neutral recreation, music has the power to influence us mentally, physically, and spiritually. There are certain types of music which can make demons feel very uncomfortable. And music can create an atmosphere where when God can work miracles. Just music. God will perform miracles. We make demons uncomfortable. He said, as soon as they went from the presence of the Lord, they started building cities and they started making instruments and they started in science, making brass and iron and they started playing music. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? And who went out? Came the serpent seed. It's where men exist an inherent impulse of worship to worship. God even Provision our physical being with an instrument through which we can declare our devotion, the human voice. So when we choose to vary the melody and rhythm of our vocal sounds, the result is music and nothing characterized the very essence of worship like the unenrated songs of man. We are praising God. We are worshiping God. He said the Bible gives us very few written clues concerning first music produced by man. But our oldest existent vocal tradition such as that of the Jewish cantor, the Muslim, the Muslims, calling the faithful to prayer or even chanting in the North American Indians indicate that mankind's first musical expression were likely a part of his religious experience. <laughs> As man musical skills develop, he began to fashion instruments from what he found as nature bones, horns, willow bars, animal skin, and go out and adopt this material to suit his personal needs. So this is a man called Juba, Juba Ken, that is Ken, the great, great, great grandfather, son of Ken. He said, great, great, great grandson of Ken was Ken. the father of all that handled the harp and the organ. Ken. Music. 
That is Genesis chapter 4, verse 21. Reflecting the life of beauty and the art which was its birthright. In time, as men developed their artistic abilities, music began to take on many forms and serve many functions. So, in our next we're talking about where music is, we'll clear the difference between the music that God likes and the music that God does not like. Oh, well, I could have and Christian music. That is the only way when we do it, we'll be pleased. No pay. God will be pleased with us. That is the only way when we are singing that song we are singing, we we'll bring the presence of God down. No pay. So in our match, we go in, we we'll look into it. The prophet was talking as David was playing that song, and that, it was casting out demons. The same song that another person will be singing will be inviting demons. So it depends upon the song we are singing. And he said, it depends upon the man also playing the piano. If the presence of David could cast out demons. Because he has yielded himself to the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Another man that has, or woman that has not yielded to the Holy Ghost, she or he also playing will bring demons down. Take my life and let it be. Three, six, two. Your talent, my talent. Oh, 